welcome back to Real Estate According to Amy. My name is Amy. And today we are going to touch on open houses. So how to run an open house successfully. Okay. The first thing that I want you to know is um, if you haven't watched it yet, we talked about lead gen and the different types of lead gen methods. So this only applies if you're going to make um, open houses one of your lead gen methods. Okay. So the reason that we host open houses at a listing is to generate leads. So generally speaking, about 1% of all listings sell from an open house. Um, it generally makes the sellers happy that we host open houses. So we like to keep our sellers happy. But um, if if your intention is not to gain leads, don't waste your time sitting in an open house. It truly is a waste of time. Get somebody else to host your open house if that's not one of your methods of lead gen. Okay. The reason we sit at open houses is to generate leads. It's to draw people in to pick up potential buyers and potential sellers. And the best way to do that is to make it a systematic process when it's part of your lead gen methods. So first, what we're going to talk about is I'm going to talk to you about safety and security when it comes to open houses okay and you may not be holding your houses open you may be holding somebody else's listing open i prefer um if we're gonna hold other people's houses open that we um i generally will look for uh, vacant listings first so that there's less potential for something to walk out the door OK, now, if there's not, um, I will host other people's um, houses open when it comes to occupied homes. There's just a few extra steps that I take care of. So here's some general open house safety tips. Number one, park where you can't get blocked in. Right. So um, make sure that you kind of scan the area. We never want to park in front of the house because it takes up potential parking. I usually like to park across the street and I usually park near a driveway, somebody else's driveway so that I can't get blocked in so that I can always go out to the car and drive away, especially with it getting dark so early now. Um, it's winter time, at least as I'm recording this, it's winter time. It's getting darker earlier and earlier. It's not like summer where it's light until 10 o'clock. So um, so you might be walking out to your cars, it's starting to get dark. Um, and so we just wanna make sure that we're safe. So you wanna be able to um, park in an area where you can get away easily and where people can't surprise you, okay? Make sure that you meet the neighbors. We'll talk about that in our systematic plan. Like it takes some time to introduce yourself, um, maybe invite them to the open house. So just some things like that. Check your phone, make sure your cell phone is charged and ready to go and that you keep it on your person at all times. There are apps, safety apps, um, specifically for real estate agents is what they were made for, where like if you put your finger on the screen for a period of time, it automatically calls the police. So things like that, you want to make sure that you um, maybe have or um, and have those emergency numbers programmed on speed dial. So a way to do that, there's um, right, you can call 911. 911 from your cell phone doesn't automatically go to the most um, nearby dispatch center. So you may want to have, you know, whatever city it is that you're hosting the open house in, grab their specific emergency number that goes directly to their police office or to the sheriff's office, and then maybe put an asterisk before it um, on when you save it to your contact. So it shows up as one of those first things. Okay. Um, keep it light, turn on all the lights and open all the curtains, not only safety, but it's marketing, right? It makes the house look nice and bright and happy. And we want to do the same thing, especially as it's getting the days are shorter. Make sure you turn on all those lights, um, open the curtains. I like to leave my doors open too, right? In this next number five, where it talks about establish your escape routes, walk around the house and notice how to get in and out of rooms. If there's a fence in the backyard with a gate, unlock the gate for easy access or exit. Um, as another escape route, open the garage door, but lock the door leading from the um, inside to the garage, direct clients to the front door with signs, right? I usually don't leave the garage door open because I don't want people trying that door and then thinking I'm rude because that door is locked um, or taking stuff out of the garage. But I do make sure like the front and back doors open, right? Leading to the backyard. And then as you are um, perusing around the house, never block yourself in. You should, even when you're showing clients property, this applies, um, never lead them into the room. Let them go into the room first. You stay by the door. So if something ever happened and turned south, you are between them and the door. Okay. Never lock yourself into a space. Um, 
so establish those escape routes and that's why i like to leave multiple doors open even when it's cold out um you know i just turn the heater up whatnot sometimes if it's super cold and rainy um you know i might leave the doors there but i'll still leave them cracked to make sure they're not locked to make sure there's an easy exit strategy set up for safety carry only what you need don't bring your purse into the open house put it in the trunk and lock it um lock up all your valuables so that way you really just have like the keys to the house and your phone right that um that you have with you um and let somebody know where you're at as well um if you're married maybe your spouse if you have older children maybe them somebody else from your office whoever that is let them know where you're hosting an open house and what the times are maybe check in with them when you go to open it and check in with them when you're done um, you're going to check out your guest as they arrive, right? Introduce yourself and direct them to a sign-in sheet. Okay, this is not popular. I make every single person sign in to my open house. If they don't want to sign in, they don't get to see the house. My sign-in sheet's there at the beginning, um, and I require them to sign in. Okay, that usually steers people away that are up to no good. I've had people turn around and walk out of the open house because they did not want to sign in. You also want to evaluate, is this someone I'm comfortable with? Does this person make me feel uneasy? If it makes you feel uneasy, just walk outside the house. Don't stay in the house with somebody that's in there that makes you uneasy, even if they sign in, totally appropriate. And the other thing on that is that we recommend that you do not host open houses by yourself. It's just a huge safety issue. Partner up with somebody. That being said, I don't recommend partnering with another real estate agent because you're there for lead generation. And if you're partnering with another agent, then that lead generation becomes a shared activity, right? How are you going to split the leads? Are you sharing all the transactions that come for it? Are you splitting them 50-50? Are you, you get a lead, I get a lead, you get, right? Like, how does that work? It just becomes really complicated. If you are sharing an open house with another agent, make sure you talk about that ahead of time decide what you're going to do and how you're going to split those clients up. And I do recommend sharing it with somebody else. Okay. Pick a lender that wants to come sit with you in the open house. Uh, um, you've got lenders, you've got uh, insurance agents, right? Who's going to be beneficial to somebody walking through the door that we're not competing for the same thing, right? It's a complimentary service, maybe a home inspector, maybe um, pest inspector, maybe a contractor, right? Maybe it's a house that needs a lot of work. So invite one of your contractor friends to come sit in the open house with you so they can walk through and say, hey, yeah, a kitchen up, a kitchen remodel or new floors in this house. This Here's some options, <coughs> right? Here's about the approximate cost. Here's how soon we could get on that, right? Figure out what would be beneficial to people walking through that door and have that person sit at the open house with you. Okay, it's a safety thing. Not one of you doesn't have to be at the front of the house, one at the back. It doesn't have to be like that. You can both be in the front of the house, but just having two people there, there's strength in numbers. Okay, um, never ever turn your back on a prospect, right? So um, always, you know, let them go first, even if they try to. We already kind of talked about that as far as um, making sure that, that prospects lead into different rooms and stuff. So you're always between them and the door. Um, and then pay attention to all people walking through the house, both men and women can be violent. So make sure that you don't um, stereotype based on gender, as well as if you are a man and you're hosting an open house, don't feel like, well, somebody would never attack me. Well, you're just as susceptible to somebody shooting you as or stabbing you as a woman is. So just be careful no matter what. Never go into certain rooms, right? Don't go into rooms with no escape routes. Don't go into walk-in closets, bathrooms, basements, laundry rooms. Always allow them to go see those. Close up in teams. Um, openings and closings are the most dangerous times during an open house. So often if there's another agent down the street doing an open house. Um, lock up your house, go to the other agent and offer to walk through his or her house to close it up with them. And then both can go over, right? So don't completely close yours down, just lock, go over and then like work in teams, right? Another way to do that too is what I like to do is I actually like to pay people to put up my open house signs and take them down. It's, I'm telling you, that's the worst part of the open house, especially if you have a lot of signs, you're putting up 10, 12, 15 signs, like that could be the worst part. <coughs> pay somebody to, to help you put up and down the signs. They can actually come in and 
this this close up in teams is eliminated if you have somebody working in the open house with you but maybe they're showing up a little late have your sign person come in do the open with you and then grab those signs and go put them out so that the house is open ready and welcoming by the time the first sign gets put out and same thing as they're closing them up have them pick up all the signs and when they get back to the house to deliver your signs back to you then um, they can stay at the house while you are closing the open house down okay so some good little tips there um how much do I pay somebody like maybe a buck a sign a couple bucks a sign find a teenager somebody I usually draw up a map mark everywhere the signs need to go and then I usually like the first couple of times um have somebody give me feedback on what the signs look like so that I can give them feedback but but unless somebody's help putting up and down those signs especially when it's hot or rainy the last thing that you want to do is go put up 15 signs in the rain or even six signs in the rain and then you show up to your open house looking like a soppy wet dog that doesn't sound like fun or if it's hot now you're all sweaty and nasty so get somebody to help you do those signs i promise it's worth your while all right so there's our safety items right there um the next thing we want to talk about is since we've kind of talked about signs is let's talk about how many signs do you need the more the barrier that's how many signs you need keep in mind in california um, you should have your name and your phone number along with your DRE number on those open house signs. But the main prominent feature of an open house sign should be that arrow. They should be really easy, high contrast, easy to see exactly where it is that arrow is pointing. Okay. Um, so uh, the more the merrier. I recommend no less than six signs at a very bare minimum. And that would be like, hey, I'm right off the main street. I would say more than that, right? Every turn, you may want like two signs for every turn. Let's make that a rule. I don't really know if that works out or not. But um, the more the merrier. You can do like the sandwich signs. A really good place to get uh, open house signs is a place called weneedsigns.com. Um, no, I'm not sponsored by them. No, I don't get any money from them. I just pay the money to make me signs. <clears throat> but they have really nice sandwich signs that actually have little nubbies on the bottom. So they all stack inside each other. They don't slide around your trunk when you're driving around. They set up nice and neat and they almost never fall down in the wind. Okay. They almost never fall down in the wind. You get those, um, some of the A-frame signs with the swinging sign in the middle and that swinging goes whoop, whoop, whoop. And then it, over and down your open house does you no good with a sign sitting on the ground um some of the other sandwich signs they're lightweight and they kind of blow and move with the wind and then they eventually fold and fall down so you don't want something that's going to fall down you want something that's going to stand up we need signs they're sandwich signs they're really nice they come in a couple different sizes you can get them in white and black and then if you do your open house sign they have some like generic ones that you can customize as well as you can send them over your own custom artwork um, you could also do the ones that stab in the ground, right? So the little wires with the corrugated cardboard, um, that's a good way to do it as well, where you can add extra signs. Maybe you have some of the A-frame signs for like prominent areas, and then maybe some of the ones you have that are stab in the ground. So you can add extra signs everywhere because those are like super cheap. I think we picked up like 50 of them for our, we did a, a community garage sale. And I think it was like a hundred bucks. For the stands and the signs maybe it was 150 bucks but it wasn't like three bucks a sign not super expensive really easy way to add signs to your open house inventory without adding a whole bunch of money um you want to put signs everywhere okay <laughs> lead people from both directions to your open house the worst part is going to an open house and you see a sign you're like oh man let me go check it out and you're driving along and you don't see any signs for like three or four blocks because then you begin thinking Am I going the right way? Did I miss a turn? I haven't seen a sign. So you want lots of signs to lead people to your open houses. If you're not hosting your own listing open, um, choose listings that are near main thoroughfares, near schools, near major roads, um, ones that are easy to get to. You don't wanna have to make 20 turns to get to an open house. It's gonna reduce your traffic, okay? Um, so signage, make sure you have your signage. Um, do you need balloons? No, you don't need balloons. Do balloons help? Sometimes, sometimes not. So you may want to have some. I really like the giant flags. I think that's a really good idea to get it in. And keep in mind that if you're stabbing signs or putting signs up in other people's property, that you probably want to go knock on their door and ask them if it's okay. Okay, it's a good way to make a contact to add that lead to your database, right? We're lead generating. So that's a good way to do that. 
ask permission to put it in the corner of their yard. You don't ever want to block the sidewalk with your open house signs. That's actually usually like a city ordinance that you're <clears throat> um, violating when you start blocking um, your sidewalks as well as it becomes a hazard. And people like to knock those down because kids are riding their bikes and they just whack them and down they go because they were blocking the sidewalk. So oftentimes I'll set them like right in a curb. It's probably a city ordinance I'm um, violating as well, but it's better than than blocking the sidewalk or I'll go ask permission to put it in somebody's yard. So that's right on the edge of the yard. So never hesitate to ask for a permission. Plan it up in advance, drive by whatever the house is that you're gonna do open house, figure out where you're gonna put your signs, mark them and mark where you put those signs and have a list of it and how many signs you put up. So you make sure you pick them all back up. If a sign gets left out, that can also cause problems for you down the road. Number one, you start losing signs that you paid a lot of money for. Number two, you could get fined for leaving signs up for an extended period of time. Okay, so open house signs. Um, selecting your open house. Again, I mentioned that you don't have to just hold your house open. We lead generate um, our, our open houses. So only one person of home sell from an open house. So it's not necessary that you that it be your listing. Hold somebody else's listing open. Do you have a geographic farm area that you're working in? Are there other listings in that area? Call those agents up and ask them if you can hold them open. Oftentimes, again, sellers don't know that it's a 1% chance of selling their house through an open house and they want more people through. So they're okay doing open houses. They want the open houses done. So if you can host it for another agent that's not interested in doing it, now you help keep their seller happy and you get the leads, right? win-win. If you are holding somebody's house open, um, report back to them at the end of the open house and let them know how it went, how many groups went through, what the feedback was, provide them if they had feedback sheets, provide them a copy of the feedback on the feedback sheets, not the contact information because those are your leads, not theirs, um, but provide them anything that they can give the sellers to let them know how the open house went, okay? Do you think there are going to be offers coming in? Was there a lot of groups through? How many groups? Um, did What was the positive feedback? What was the negative feedback? Give that all to them in the form of an email once you're done with the open house. They will really appreciate it and they will start reaching out to you in the future to hold their open opens for them, okay? Because a lot of agents don't like doing open houses. It's generally, I would say, one of the best ways to lead generate. If you go into it with the right mindset, you should walk away with one lead per open house that's going to buy... Um, sometime in the near future, in the next couple of months, if not right away, highly recommend it. One of the one of the best ways that I found to grow my business when I first started um, moving into full time real estate agents. Okay, <clears throat> um, we already talked about. Make sure you find a listing that's got easy access to it. If you're looking for one, I usually look through the vacant homes first because again, just less likely for something to walk away. If it's not a vacant home, if it's your listing, have a conversation with the sellers. If it's not your listing, send an email to the listing agent and say, um, you know, before the open house with what your plan is going to be and to remind them to ask the sellers to tuck stuff away. People go through open houses looking for prescription medications and valuables, right? So we want to make sure that we don't leave jewelry out, that our prescription meds aren't sitting out in cabinets or even necessarily like right in the top cabinet. Um, or even maybe a medicine cabinet, they may want to tuck that away someplace else. So I usually say, hey, as a reminder, um, yeah, I'll send them an email and say, hey, the open house on Saturday is from 12 to 2. Please let the sellers know that I plan to arrive closer to 1130, about 30 minutes ahead of time. And I probably won't be gone until about 230 by the time I've closed up. Please remind the sellers to put away any prescription medications and any valuables, have them tuck them into a bottom drawer or remove them from the house completely to help eliminate any potential um, cause for theft. And I will provide you with a follow-up once the open house is completed within 24 hours of the completed open house, right? So now I've, I've given them my schedule, what my plan is, what to anticipate and expect, and to let them know that they can expect some follow-up, right? So we're going to send that email out um, to them. I usually do it a couple days before the open house. If we schedule the open house on Sunday or Monday for the next week, we don't necessarily want to send it out then. We want to send it out closer to the time period of the open house, just so they're reminded and can give the sellers a reminder. <clears throat> um, 
you usually want to ask the listing agent if there's anything that you should know about the property. Um, if the disclosures aren't already posted in the MLS, ask them if they have any seller disclosures, if there's anything that should be disclosed regarding the property, um, if they've had any activity offers, like what kind of stuff's been going on with this house so that you have all the pertinent information. Okay, um, it's nice to put together like a little info sheet for your open house. Um, so so let's talk about setting it up systematically, right? So if our goal is to make open houses part of our lead gen method, we're not just going to show up at an open house on Saturday and call it done, okay? We want to make it part of our entire week. So there's a um, open house blitz that's kind of good. Um, it, I think it needs to be added to just a little bit to be optimized for open houses. But here is the 10-day open house blitz um for you so this just talks about um you know this is a team that's finding great success doing open houses this is actually kind of an old method but they have the burns team 10 day blitz right 10 days don't start until the home's been decluttered right so until the home's ready to go on so um day one they start this on friday i honestly would not start this on friday i would start it on monday if open houses are part of my legion method um this isn't for my open house but i'm hosting somebody else's open house well no matter what i would probably do it the same um i'm gonna start i'm gonna select that house on monday okay so come monday i know when i walk in to the office i'm gonna knock out my legion and then after legion i'm gonna hand pick what my listing is for this next weekend that i'm gonna hold open Okay, as part of your business plan, you should have it calendared what weekends you will be holding open houses, how many open houses you will hold in 2023, when you were holding those open houses, so you already have it in place and ready to go. Is it once a week? Is it once a month? Is it twice a month? Right, how often are you doing that? Okay, so on Monday, I'm going to um, identify my open house. Okay. <clears throat> um. I am going to reach out to the agent and secure the open house for the weekend. And I'm probably going to have a backup open house as well in case something happens and it goes into contract. You may not want to secure the open house until Tuesday only because, um, you know, whatever happened over the weekend, those offers may trickle in on Monday. So you may want to wait and kind of secure it on Tuesday and start this process on Tuesday. Um, then you are going to send invites to your database, right? So who in your database is local to the area, knows people local to the area, send them out and say, hey, just a heads up, feel free to come by and visit me. I'm hosting an open house at this location on this day. You never know who may be looking to move up or who, who may be looking to move down, or maybe some people in your database are still renters and haven't bought yet. So invite them to the open house so that they can come and see what the market looks like right now. What's this listed at? What's the house look at, right? So we're going to do that on one day. I would probably select the open house on one day, the next day. So if I'm selecting my open house on Tuesday, um, I would create the flyers on Tuesday as well. So um, select your open house and create flyers and social media posts on that same day on Tuesday. Okay. On Wednesday, I'm going to send an email off to my database to let them know that I'm going to be hosting an open house that weekend and to invite them to send their friends, family, or come by themselves and say hi. Okay. On Thursday, I'm going to go door knock the neighborhood to invite people to the open house. Okay. This is a good way, right? We want to be prospecting based on marketing enhanced. This is a good way to make connections with those people in the area and neighborhood. At the very minimum, I would do like 20 houses across the street and 10 on each side, right? That's going to be 40 homes. If you have more time, I would probably uh, set aside like two hours to go door knock the neighborhood. Um, all around that property. As we saw on the safety tips, it's a good way to introduce yourself to make people aware that you're hosting an open house. There might be some more traffic. Invite them by. Now's the best time to um, invite people to live in your neighborhood, right? You guys are the best marketers for your neighborhood. You guys already live here and love it here. So who do you know that should live in your neighborhood, right? Now's a good time to pick your neighbor. 
right? That's a good method. Um, always have something to leave behind. So if people don't open the door, you can make them aware of the open house and invite them to swing on by. The neighbors want to come by. The neighbors want to compare their house to their neighbor's house to see what the difference is and how their stacks up. And that's how you find additional listings, okay? So on Thursday, door knock to invite people by. Um, if you have like a circle dialing system that identifies the phone numbers, um, that would be a good day to also make some phone calls, right? To, to call them not only uh, to go door knock, but maybe to make some phone calls and invite, or um, you might want to <clears throat> call people on Wednesday and door knock on Thursday, okay? In addition, um, come Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you want to start posting about that open house on social media. So if you're using social media, um, get it out there on social media. Join the local um, like open house groups, the homes for sale groups, the what's going on in this area, in the city, in this county groups. Um, get it out there. Maybe spend one day marketing to the local people. Maybe spend like Wednesday, market it to local. Thursday, market it to those um, potential buyers out of the area. Like if you're in the Solano County area, you might have people moving from the Bay Area to the, to the Solano County area because you can get more for your money that way or even Concord, um, East Bay, right? Um, maybe advertise up to Sacramento because it's kind of getting busy and crowded up there. So start sharing posts to other groups as well, where people might be like, oh my gosh, I can get a house for 600,000 with a yard where in San Francisco, that would buy me like a postage stamp shed on no property, right? So figure out who that home would appeal to and go um, connect with those people on social media, um, starting about three days before your open house. Okay. Um, on the open house day, you're going to go host that open house. I really don't recommend door knocking on the day of the open house. I recommend doing it a couple of days before or the day before, um, only because it's a lot to fit into one day and then you end up door knocking less doors on the day of. However, maybe you want to door knock everything but like those 20 homes right around, maybe 10 across the street and five on either side. Leave those alone on Thursday, door knock everything else. And then right before the open house, you door knock those last um, 20 doors or so. Um, you don't have to have this says host the open house event with light fare, such as sandwiches, chips, drinks. We're new agents. We don't have a lot of money. You don't have to provide beverages and stuff as part of the open house. Now, it might be in your best interest to go ahead and bring a cookie sheet and go get some of those like cut to, um, you know, like those rolls of cookie dough and you can just cut the cookies and, and make some cookies there in the house. It'll make the house smell more homey, give people something they can grab and walk through the home with if you wanted to share them, but it will make the house feel more homey. If you don't do that, get a bottle of vanilla put a little bit of vanilla like on the burner or whatnot, turn it on. It will help make the house smell delightful or pop it in the oven, turn the oven on for a little bit. It'll help smell, uh, spread that smell throughout the house. You want to arrive about 30 minutes before your open house so that you can make sure to turn all the lights on, open all the curtains, get everything ready to go, maybe shuffle some things around. Maybe they didn't stash away their litter box or maybe the dog beds are still in the house. Like take those out to the garage, right? So do some stuff to make the house feel homey and more welcoming get it all ready to go. I usually pop into the house first, get it all ready, get everything ready to go. And then if I'm doing my own signs, then I would get, I'd lock it back up, get in my car, go put all the signs out and then come back and it's ready to just unlock and bring people in, set up your sign in page ahead of time. If you've got somebody delivering your signs, I still show up about 30 minutes early so that by the time that first sign goes out or by the time the signs are done, that house is ready to welcome people in with potential buyers and potential sellers, okay? Um, I always set up a sign in place. I usually had like a little travel table that went with me. It was um, actually like a little TV tray that I would set up a sign in um, station where they could sign in. And on my sign in sheets, I like to do just a single sign in per page. There's two reasons for that. Number one is people are much more likely to share their information if they know other people aren't gonna see it. So um, one page, name, phone number, email, how did you hear about the open house? Um, I, there's usually a question on there, like, are you working with an agent? And then who, because oftentimes people say yes, but they aren't actually. So I ask them to put in their name. And um, sometimes like, how did you hear about the open house? I might put like social media, you know, saw it on Zillow, saw it on the MLS, heard about it from my friend or agent, 
uh, or just drove by, right? Or maybe just a neighbor, right? So that I can identify who these people are. It also gives me a half sheet that as I'm having conversations with these people, right? As they walk through the door and I'm like, oh, hi, how's it going? Have you been hunting for a house long? No, we're just getting started. Oh, you seen any other homes? No, we haven't, right? I know there's a pretty good chance they don't have an agent versus, oh yeah, we've been looking for a while. This is like our 50th home. We just haven't found the right one. Right. I'm going to be like, oh, cool. Are you just going through open houses or is somebody showing houses to you? Right. I'm going to get a feel for how they're getting into homes, what their time frames look like, who they are, what their needs are. And then on the back of that sign in sheet that they just filled out, I'm going to jot down little notes who they were, who they came through the door so that I remember visually which group of people that was that came through the door, what they were looking for. So that when I get home, I can set up a, a open house search. Right for them or a house search for them. And that I can really tend to their needs and figure out what uh, what's gonna meet their needs and what's gonna help build my relationship with that person to win them as a client. Okay, so I'm gonna make little notes to follow up. Okay, so that's on the day of the open house. So remember leading up to it, we selected our open house. We sent out an email to our database. We started about three days before the open house. We started social media marketing. Um, a couple of days before the open house, we maybe went and door knocked in the neighborhood. The day of the open house, we're going to put up signs, um, get everything ready to go. And I'm always going to advertise on the day of the open house as well on those social media groups as well. So I might have done it like two or three days before the open house. And then I'm going to redo those advertising on the morning of. And you can schedule those posts to go out so you don't have to do it the morning of. Um, so I'm going to schedule those posts to automatically get posted and go out on the day of. Now, if you're in groups where you have to get approval, you are going to want to do it the day before the open house because sometimes they're delayed in approving posts and you want to make sure that it's approved before the day of the open house. We're going to welcome people through the open house, greet them, have conversations with them, get to know them. The goal is I'm going to walk away with at least one solid lead from this open house. I'm going to make notes on the sign-in sheets. I'm not going to let people through the house if they do not sign in. Um, and so I'm just going to have those meaningful conversations. Now, after the open house is done, I'm going to go find one of the features of the home. Okay. Maybe it has a gorgeous pool in the backyard. Maybe it has the ugliest fireplace that you've ever seen. Whatever it is that makes that house memorable, I'm going to go find that feature. I'm going to take my phone before I leave for the open house. I'm going to hold up my phone. <clears throat> I'm going to record myself saying, thank you so much for passing through my open house today at 123 Sample Street. I really appreciate your time. It was a pleasure connecting with you. <laughs> if you have any questions or need any help with um, either this house or any other homes or any questions regarding your real estate needs, I'm more than happy to assist you. Um, feel free to respond to this message or reach out to me at any time. Have a fabulous day or enjoy the rest of your weekend, right? Just blanket message, not saying any names. I'm going to take that video now and I'm going to text it to everybody who passed through that open house so that they get a thank you on the day of, okay? With the prominent feature so they remember exactly who I was and what house I was in. Okay, so here are some other tips for the open house, and then we'll go into our follow-up plan. In preparing for the open house the day before on Friday, let's say our open house is on Saturday. On Friday, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to go to, um, hold on just a second. Uh, list reports. Okay, through listreports.com, you can make a report for any listing and it's free. It's going to open up here in a second, but I'm going to create one of these for my listing. I'm going to print one out in color so that it can be displayed at the open house. And then I'm going to create a Google Drive. Okay. Um, Google Drive is fabulous. I already talked about it when I talked about what apps to have on your phone, Google Drive. I create a folder in my Google Drive. Okay, so let's go Drive. What I would do is I would come over here and I would go My Drive, New Folder, and I would call it 123 Sample Street, whatever the address is of the host or the house you're hosting open. 
So now I have this folder inside my drive. I'm gonna to go to list reports. I'm gonna log into my list reports, which is free. So list reports is free for most of their features. Um, you can partner with a lender that partners with list reports, go find the lender to partner with, right? This is a good way to build relationships. Um, go find a lender that has list reports. They unlock some other features for you, but you can use this completely free. <clears throat> Hold on, I'm just waiting for it to open. Um, in addition to this, all right, so here is look at Happy Thursday, market overview, four reasons to look at homes. Look at, you've got like little social media posts that you can share in here. I didn't even know about four reasons to look at homes in the rain. <clears throat> My listings, right? Shareables, home buying with. So this has all today's shareable. Um, there is a right time of the year to buy a home, right? Today's shareable, really easy just to share it. All right. Look at today's notable, today's shareable, share types. Look at that, all sorts of tools in here that they've released that I had no idea happened. All right, I think I need list packs. They've changed just a little bit since the last time I went in here. Um, no. All right. Your market overview. Okay, give me just a second. I just have to find, refer a colleague. I just want to create <clears throat> my maybe marketing kits. Here we go. All right. So marketing kits. I can go in here and I can hit new marketing kit, plug in the address of the home I'm hosting, and it's going to pull up and I can um, make this uh, list reports. Now, if you have an admin, a lot of the stuff as you grow your business, things are these are things your admin can do for you, which is why I haven't been in here in a while because I haven't seen it in a while. Um, so there's, they make little flyers, shareables, right. That you can share property website. Um, we don't want that. We want printed materials is what we're looking for. So we're waiting for that to load up. All right. Open house infographics. This is what I like the infographics. Now I would download this and then I would upload this into that Google Drive as well as I would print it. <clears throat> We're gonna wait for it to finish loading so it'll pull up. They also have like open house flyers. So this makes like, if you don't have a really easy way to make stuff, this uh, list reports makes it really easy to create open house flyers and stuff. So this is, it's in a convenient area. Some daily errands in this location require a car and most major services are within four miles. So how close is the nearest ATM, groceries, medical, gas, gym, coffee, right? Movie theater, the great outdoors. These you can edit as well. So like um, Southwood Park, the Green Tree Golf Club. So you could edit this with um, like Green Tree is now closed. So you may wanna um, put like Paradise Valley in there, or I like to add uh, Lake Berryessa, which is nearby to the Vacaville area. And then I figure out the mileage. I go to Google Maps and figure out the mileage from the house to Lake Berryessa, or maybe even the dog park. So oftentimes I put like the Penny Adobe dog park on there um, so that people can see that there's things to do in the area and how close this house is to those. <clears throat> Here's a summary of the restaurants in the area, the schools in the area, with the um, scores there. So it tells you what the scores are and how close they are. So this is a great thing that you can do. Here's where you can edit that report and it allows you to add things to it. So I always go to listreports.com and I create this. I print a color copy to have with me in the listing. And then I have a copy of this in my Google Drive folder for this property. In addition to this, I print out the property information page from the MLS with all the details for a client. And I put that in that folder as well, in case somebody's interested in it. 
<clears throat> I put in the open house flyer that I've created or what I've stolen from list reports, what I've downloaded from list reports into there. And then I also am going to think about the house that I'm holding open. This one here was a country property with like four bedrooms on three and a half acres. So maybe somebody who didn't want this house, maybe the reason is that they wanted more land or maybe they wanted a smaller house on land, right? So I might go into the MLS and pull up those homes so that I have a list of those homes as well inside that folder. I may also go ahead and print up a list of those homes um, and have them on kind of like a bulletin board set up inside the property that I'm holding open, right? And I'm gonna put like, um listings with a garage or listings on five plus acres or listings under 2000 square feet right or maybe i'm holding a listing open a specific school district maybe i would put um, other listings in the school district or maybe it's a listing that doesn't have a pool maybe i would go listings with pools in vacaville it's hot um, right so what are people going to want if they didn't want this house what other homes would they be looking at and i'm going to make some lists of those and i'm going to put those lists into my google drive folder so if somebody's like man this one only had three bedrooms i really needed four bedrooms you'd be like oh i have a list of all the four bedroom homes available right now do you want me to send it to you right and then and now i've got their legit email not just the email they provided at sign in or their legit phone number that i can then send a link to that folder and share it with them and now i've traded information for information so i want to have convenient helpful things in that folder. I very rarely have a bunch of flyers in the house available for people to take with them. Okay, I want them to trade me legit information for those flyers. So I'm going to have a digital format one. I'm going to have usually one in like a nice frame and then digitally for everything else that I might want to share or send to somebody who visited the open house. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? I'm going to have this whole board of stuff and ready to go with a folder of stuff in my Google Drive. And then I'm going to save a shortcut to that Google Drive folder on my phone. So all I have to do is pull up my phone, click that link and share it with other people. OK, super simple. Um, hopefully that was helpful and that and what I come prepared with and how I share it with people and why I don't have paper products sitting around my open house for people to just take with them that they're just going to throw in the backseat of their car and throw away. Okay, I want information. I'm going to send out that thank you video after the open house, and I'm going to get them put in to my database immediately. Okay. Now, so after the open house, so the day of the open house, I've sent out that thank you note. I'm going to get them added into my open house. And then after the open house, if the open house is hosted on like Saturday, then come Monday, I'm going to call and follow up with those people that I haven't yet heard back from. I'm also going to take the time to set them up on a property search in my CRM or in your MLS portal based on my conversation with them as they pass through the house of what they're looking for. If they haven't, if I didn't have a good conversation with them about what they're looking for, I'm just going to set them up with a generic search that matches kind of the home I held open. Okay, then I'm going to send them a text message. This is a good way to make contact with them this first week after i've gotten their information and this is for any lead not just an open house lead i'm going to put them on like a daily contact for like the next week okay where i'm connecting with them email phone or text okay so i'm going to set them up on a search then i might shoot them over an email that says hey it was a pleasure seeing you at the open house I did set you up on a property search that will automatically send you any listings that become available as they become available that match the criteria of a three bedroom, two bathroom home in the greater Vacaville area um, under the list price of about 650,000. Please let me know if you'd like me to make any changes to this. You'll also get an email invite to your own, your own portal where you can go in there and save properties or uh, mark the ones that you're not interested in. So you can keep track of what you like and what you don't like. This search is gonna be way more accurate than like a Zillow search, which sometimes could have an inaccurate information or a delay in the information that's pulled. Please let me know if you want me to change anything, right? Something like that. I'm gonna send them an email on that day. So usually I'm gonna set them up on a search on Monday. I'm gonna send them an email um, at the same time as that. on, on um, 
Tuesday, I may call them and be like, hey, just checking in. Thanks again for passing through my open house rate. We're just trying to get them to answer their phone. If they don't, I might leave a message and say, hey, just so you know, I set you up with your own link to the um, MLS listings in the portal that match like three bedroom, two bathroom homes. Please let me know if you got that. And if you want me to make any changes to that search for you, right? So I'm just going to leave a message, give them permission not to call me back. Day three, I might send them a text message. And then I might repeat. Day four, they might get, right? So now we've got Monday, they got an email. Tuesday, they got a phone call. Wednesday, they got a text message. Thursday, they might get another um, email. Friday, they might get another uh, phone call. And then Monday, they might get another text message. Okay, from there, now I'm going to move on to what we would call like an eight by eight. I'm going to, instead of annoying them each and every day, I'm going to reach out. If you got their phone or their address, this would also be a really good time to send them a thank you note for passing through their open house with maybe a business card tucked in there as well. Okay. So just some little tips there. Um, once I've reached out to them that week after followed up, if I still haven't made contact with them, I am not getting a response. I'm not ever giving up on these people until they tell me like 20 times to stop. Okay. What I'm going to move into is an eight by eight. We're now like once a week, we're going to reach out to them and try to make contact with them to get them to respond. Okay, so I'm going to set that up on my reminders if I can't automate it in my CRM. If I can automate it in my CRM, I'm going to set up a, a plan where they're getting a text, a phone call, or an email once a week for the next eight weeks. It might be things like, hey, I saw a house that I th thought might match your criteria. Let me know if you want me to send over the information. Right. It might be like a phone call. Hey, just checking in. I hope everything's going well. Um, maybe if they were a home buyer, maybe you want to send them a home buyer packet that walks them through the home buying process. Right. We just want to add value to their lives and get them to, even though they're not responding to us, to build that relationship. Okay. Um, and we're going to go into these touches more, a little bit more in depth um, in that lesson. This was more about open houses. So the first week, call every day. Second week, we are going to um, move them to an eight by eight. So for the next two months, they're going to get a touch once a week from us, either call, text, or email. Then after that happens, if they're still not responding, then we're going to move them to what's called like a 19 to convert. Okay. And we'll go more into details on that on our systematic follow-up um, lesson, but the then they would get moved to that 19 to convert. Okay. So Hope that was helpful with open houses. Our goal is to get a response to build clients. The other thing, one more little tidbit before I end this lesson. Um, I know this one was a little bit on the longer side, but um, you may want to pull the other listings in the area that aren't having open houses or even if they are having open houses and figure out what the showing requirements are and then clear off an hour of your time after the open house. So if you had somebody that walked through that open house and they're like, man, I really wanted a four bedroom home. You'd be like, there's actually a four bedroom home, very similar to condition to this, just around the corner. Would you like to see that one later today? You already got time blocked for it to go show that property. So then they'd be like, oh my gosh, yes, I would love to see that property later today. You're like, perfect. I'm done here at one. Let's meet over there at 1.30, right? And then we set up showing, get them scheduled. We've got the next appointment. If you can secure the next appointment with them as they're at the open house, your success rate goes up substantially. So if you can make an appointment, maybe they're a first time home buyer, um, you can go ahead and schedule that home buyer consultation with them. An existing home buyer, same thing, schedule a time to see the next house. If they're um, potentially going to list their property, maybe <coughs> get scheduled on the calendar for that next week to do a walkthrough of their property. Um, even if they're like, well, we're thinking next summer we might sell our house. You'd be like, great, let's schedule a time where I can do a quick walkthrough of your property. I can give you those little tidbits and tricks, things that can you can be doing over the next six months to prepare your home for sale, right? We And then schedule that appointment. So your goal is to get that next step scheduled with them because their response is going to be much better. The ones that don't, um, you don't have that next step scheduled. Those are the ones that you're going to begin the follow-up process with. Even those that you have, um, uh, appointment schedule with, you still want to send them that thank you text message though, or voice uh, video message. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. I think that um, putting a plan in place and putting a system in place to your open houses will
to, to gain more clients and more leads through your open houses than just um, hoping that people show up on the day of. You can take it steps further by adding like open house uh, sign writers to the signs earlier in the week to let people know that you have an open house there on Saturday, right? So it might drive people to go through the open house. Of course, if it's not your listing, you want permission from the listing agent to be able to do so. Um, or maybe you have a separate freestanding sign that you go and put up for people to let them know that you're doing an open house. Um, so just some little tidbits. If you have any other tips or tricks that you have worked really well for you, please feel free to share them in the comments section. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to share those as well. Again, like and subscribe. We're going to dive into um, some other forms of lead generation as well. So I look forward to seeing you on future videos. Have a fabulous day and we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.